All right, guys, let's talk about supercapacitors and ultracapacitors and little baby capacitors. I wanted you to be able to buy for years, you know, different places. Uh, first of all, uh, in, uh, in the power supply of car audio, a capacitor is kind of a universal thing. So, whatever voltage um, your alternator is trying to charge, your capacitor is going to rise with that alternator. So, uh, if you have, per se, uh, an AGM battery bank and you're, you know, it's charging, it's resting at like uh, 12 and a half volts or whatever it's resting at. Um, and your alternator, you've replaced it's charging at 14 and a half volts. Your supercapacitor is going to, whenever your vehicle is turned off, that supercapacitor is going to rest at the voltage of the uh, batteries because there's no other power source. It's going to slowly settle to that point. When you start the vehicle up, the capacitor is going to, uh, the voltage in the capacitor is going to come up with the alternator. And uh, the capacitor kind of is a nice go-between for the whole entire system. So it's going to help the alternator in uh, smoothing out those bumps. So the capacitor is going to be trying to maintain, like a, like a, a high-voltage battery, it's going to be trying to maintain that voltage. And the capacitor and the, and the alternator is going to be feeding it and keeping it built up. Now... Without a, uh, a high voltage battery or storage in the system, it's going to struggle to do that, but it is going to try. So the cool thing about a, uh, any capacitor is that it's going to act as a buffer for any system, no matter what the voltage your system is running, up to... I think it's 16 volts or maybe 17 volts. I can't remember. But there's a limit to how high the capacitor can be charged, but it's pretty high. Um, so even if you're running a 12-volt system with a stock alternator and just one battery, standard issue, you know, car, that capacitor is going to act as a big buffer for your amplifier. So it's going to help... Um, keep your uh see the battery can only release power so quickly and the alternator can only release power so quickly the capacitor on the other hand can re release a ton of power very fast and it can also take in power very fast so it acts like a spring between the rest of the electrical system and your amplifier it gets pushed tight whenever it's needed it can release that release that energy very quickly Whereas all the, the rest of the system is doing is just pushing and tightening that spring back up for each of those releases. Um, so it's always going to help, no matter whether you're running 12-volt system, 14-volt system, or a 16-volt system. <clears throat> the capacitor bank is always going to make, uh, going to condition the power so that it's nice and smooth and consistent for something that requires instant loads. If you look on... Um, all heavy electrical motors, um, you're going to see a, a lump on the side of it. And that lump is a capacitor. And the reason that capacitor is there is to help start that motor in the beginning. It, it can put, when an electrical motor stops in a position where it's between the windings, it can actually stall and, or, and not, not be in a position to where it can start turning, Right. Uh, and also, sometimes it needs more power to kick it off and get it spinning just so it can it can initiate that ro first few rotations and then the power can kick on and bring it up to speed. And that's why they have a capacitor on them, is to help start those motors. Um, they need that instant power. And that's exactly what the capacitor does 
for amplifier as well is it gives it the instant punch over and over again that it wants whenever it's wanting to hit those bass notes and those drum beats and all those other high powered uh, things it needs to do. So no matter how you're building your system, um, it does not matter whether you're building a stock system or, you know, just barely upgrading or whether you're going with a, a big, huge lithium bank or whatever uh, with multiple alternators. Capacitors are always going to be beneficial for that instant power. Now, once you get enough batteries built up, you know, uh, like I said, a capacitor can release a ton of energy at once and a battery, a single battery or two batteries or three batteries are limited to how much power they can output. But once you've built up a big, you know, like C-Max bank or, or a big lithium bank of, of, of storage where you've got tons of power and tons of different cells to be able to output power, uh, at that point, the capacitor is not really going to help because the batteries just combined together have so much instant release that they're going to do it regardless. But if you're anywhere in the middle from having that massive bank of lithium or, uh, or, or, uh, or AGM batteries or whatever, between that and just starting out, the capacitor is going to be huge towards making your system more stable and delivering the power to your uh, amplifier more effectively. Now, whenever you uh, do decide to upgrade from a 12 volt system to say a 14 volt system, the capacitor is going to upgrade itself right with you. It's going to run at whatever uh, voltage your, your alternator is putting out. A capacitor kind of is like a, a battery that can rest at any voltage. If you think of it that way, the only thing is the capacitor doesn't store a ton of energy. So it does need a battery. Uh, well, yes, it needs a battery and alternator to be able to supply it with enough power to do its job. So while it is a very versatile and uh, a piece of equipment and can handle many different types of installs um, and is going to help you all the way up to the very biggest level. It is limited in as to how much power it can produce based on uh, how much power it's getting fed into it. And uh, it's also limited on the voltage that's going to go in. So if you're feeding it, if, you're, if your alternator is feeding 14 volts and your batteries along with your capacitor are sitting at 12, then once your alternator can't put power into that capacitor fast enough, the batteries will, and your voltage starts to drop, the capacitor is just going to fall right with it until the battery takes off, and then the battery is going to help maintain that capacitor. The capacitor, again, is not a massive storage device. It's a spring. So it has to be constantly tightened back up. Um, you know, it's a cushion. It's not a storage device. So while it won't necessarily help a tremendous amount in certain situations, It'll always help some, and then whenever you get the rest of your system up to par, it's going to be right there conditioning that power and keeping that keeping that uh, amplifier fed, which is the key. You don't want your – essentially what it does is keep the voltage from dropping every time the bass hits and also keeps the bass notes strong. So instead of them uh, reaching – instead of that amplifier reaching for power and it not being there – the capacitor is going to have it right there waiting so it can pull all at once. You just got to feed it back in, keep filling it up. I know it's complicated, but just know that no matter how you're going and what direction you're going with your electrical, a capacitor is going to help that system overall. It's going to help a lot. It'll make your bass punchier, your hits harder, you know, um, all that stuff. It's also going to help. I find it made a big difference in the overall feel of the music. Um, just drum beats and, and other hard hitting uh, items throughout the music just have more impact and there's more uh, definition in that sound. It's got a lot more punch. Um, being able to be dynamic um, 
that's one thing a battery can't really do is be dynamic. It, it can provide power, but it can't just dump a lot at one time where that capacitor can. So when those dynamic things happen in the music, the capacitor can ride that wave. And all you have to do is keep feeding it power and it keeps, it keeps giving the beats, you see. It's just it's a chain. It's a, it's a team effort. But the capacitor is, is one of those guys that can play on any team. And uh, it's going to help any team to a degree. So, yeah, super caps, ultra caps, all that good stuff. Now, what's the difference in the capacitor world? Uh, mainly the amount of storage they have. So, a regular old uh, off the shelf, you know, one ferried capacitor from, you know, AutoZone or wherever you buy it at, internet, Amazon. One ferret, five ferret, 10, 15, any of those, two ferret, anything, you know, down in that range. They are very capable of putting out all their power quickly, but they don't store very much at all. It's a tiny, tiny amount. Um, I mean, a microscopic amount. And uh, ultimately, those things are good for looks. I mean... Uh, they're they're not an upgrade. They don't do anything, essentially. They're there for appearance. Will they help your dynamic power slightly? Yes. Um, you know, uh, but are you going, is it going to stop your headlights from dimming? No. Um, are you going to notice it? Probably not. Are they going to help a weak electrical system? No. Um, but when you get into super caps and ultra caps, where well, you're looking at 300, 400, 500 farads of storage, completely different. These things could start your car many times over without being charged. They have a ton of power in them. Um, so even though they're not as good at storing energy as a battery, they store a lot of energy, nonetheless, and they can dump it instantly. And I mean instantly, like a lightning strike. Um, a battery can't do that. So there's that. Uh, so, yeah, don't bother with the little baby fair, baby caps. You're just wasting your money unless you just want a voltmeter, you know, uh, maybe something that looks interesting. I mean, I get it. Um, but if you want real power, you're going to have to run something with, uh, with some capacity to it, something with some storage to it. Um, and, uh, you know, 300, 400 farads, whatever will get you in that ballpark. So yes, a capacitor will work with your system, no matter a super capacitor or an ultra capacitor. They're both the same. The names are just interchanged. We'll work with your system no matter what voltage you're charging at, no matter what voltage you're, they will always help. They're a, they're a go-to uh, item that's going to help you in your audio, car audio system, no matter how it's set up, all the way up to the most big, big, big stuff. Now, like I said, once you get to the point to where you've got, you know, 500 uh, amp hours or 200 or 300 amp hours and you've got, you know, Tons of batteries. The capacitor at that point is not going to be doing much because those batteries are capable of together outputting that voltage like a lightning strike all by themselves. Uh, the capacitor wouldn't hurt the system. It just wouldn't be beneficial at that point. Uh, it is what it is. Once you get to that extreme, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys running, you know, uh, like DJ Ruskles, for example. Uh, he was out there demoing for a long time. Didn't even have his vehicle running. He was just sitting there running off that battery bank. He's got a thousand, a thousand. Well, he may have more than that now. I don't know, but he has a thousand amp hours of uh, of CMAX. He can demo for you know an hour or two just off of his battery bank. Now, once you get to that level, the, it, the, a lot of the rules just change because now, 
you know, you're charging up this massive amount of storage that essentially turns into a temporary power plant. You're, you're, you don't even have to have a high output alternator at that point. You just, it's just going to help charge that bank back up a little quicker. That's all. Um, it's like it goes, it goes out of, out of bounds at that point. You're just, you're a, a power plant with an amplifier attached to it. So once you reach that point, you know, a lot of these other rules don't really apply anymore. Not so much because you're just running off that bank and that bank is sustaining you for, you know, ridiculous amount of time. Uh, but if you're like me and, you know, probably 90% of the rest of the crowd, all this stuff is relevant. You got to run your engine. You got to run that alternator, you know, when you're demoing or your batteries are going to get drained really quick. Um, so anyway, guys, I know this is a little unrehearsed, like, man, yeah, pretty much everything I do, uh, I just talk about what I think I need to talk about and we, we go from there. Um, for those of you that stuck around to the end, uh, if you're digging the music that I put up in some of my videos and go down there in the link and click on my SoundCloud link and check out the tracks that I've got up on SoundCloud. You might find some of them pretty cool. And uh, it's my little side side hobby is uh, writing lyrics. And I write all the lyrics for all the tracks that are on there. And all of them are made by AI, which is a lot more work than you might think getting that sorted. But... Um, but I write, uh, I write all the music, or I write all the songs, all the lyrics for everything, and then put it all together using AI. It's kind of like teaching a puppy not to pee in the house. AI. <laughs> Inherently, he knows how to go out and pee. You just got to convince him that that's where he needs to go pee. <laughs> or pushing a string, you know. <laughs> It's just <laughs> good times all around. <laughs> Getting ready to go to the event tomorrow, and I'll be shooting a bunch of video there, so you guys will get to see some demo stuff. And there's going to be one really cool build, and probably a couple more pretty cool builds also. So look forward to that. And I'm going to get some good stuff. Anyway, guys, peace.